We certainly do, although I've had to do a quick pivot this time, team. I was going to talk about the importance of flu vaccination. I got mine last week. You do yours too. We'll be talking about that soon. But I needed to turn quickly to the US because US President Trump has restricted federal funding for research that experiments with viruses and other germs. It's a type of research called gain of function. Now, here to help explain it is one of my favourite science communicators, Wendy Zuckerman, the host and executive producer of perhaps the best podcast in the world, Science Versus. <laughs> Welcome back to News Breakfast. Thanks for having me. La I, sorry to, you know, you know, you know how much it's I love great. your Let's work. start with a positive. We're yeah. just going to be moving downhill, downhill from, from there. Uh, we spoke in February, uh, actually in a very similar way, about Trump saying, oh no, what is he doing to science? I think we called it the war on science. I didn't want to do a part two. I'm sorry we're doing that, Wendy, but gain of function what is it okay what's he done this is a really this is really interesting what's been what's happened just last week so gain of function research as you mentioned the the type of research that's being targeted here is what the administration is calling dangerous gain of function mm -hmm. research and, and they're calling it controversial as yeah. well right exactly mm -hmm. and so what they're talking about and i and i do think it is controversial and has the potential to be dangerous so it's where you take as you mentioned a virus or a bacteria you tweak the genetics in a way that what they are defining makes it either more deadly or more contagious. Mm. And so I can hear a lot of people, I can hear you from your <laughs> breakfast <laughs> yeah. saying, well, that feels like a really good thing that we want to be restricting or putting a pause on, which is what um, this executive order has done. But it's really important to know that there is a lot of oversight for this sort of research already. In fact, President Biden just a year ago already put uh, restrictions, new restrictions on this kind of research because of the potential that if you're tweaking around with a virus, to make it more deadly, you know, we, we don't want every scientist out there doing that sort of work. And so there are restrictions on it currently. And it's also important to know the reason why researchers yeah, do yeah, why, this kind why of work. Why would you want to make it more yeah, virulent? Or... Obviously, so you can start a pandemic. Um, I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> no, it's, there's a, there's yeah, a terrible not, joke to make no in, this sort, to of, start a in this sort of climate. Um, <laughs> Often what researchers are doing here is there's actually many, many uses for this kind of research. Mm. One is cancer therapy. So researchers are currently tweaking viruses so that they can attack tumours. Um, this would be captured by this new executive order, that kind of research currently put on pause in the US. It also helps us understand the threats around us. So bird flu, for example, um, how we can understand what's the chance that that flu is gonna come out into the population, into the human population, how dangerous is it going to be? What researchers can do is they can tweak the virus that's circulating in birds right now and say, what is the chance that it could get into humans, that it could be deadly within us, that it could start spreading? Mm -hmm. And so really important to help us understand the current bird flu situation. And yet, so what's happened is he's currently put it on 120 days. There's a pause on that kind of research in the US and now he's going to do more oversight. Um, and I think in some ways it's not, it's not terrible and there have been scientists that have come out and said we do want even more restrictions. Yeah, we should be careful. The issue is that it is coming at a time in US politics where, as you've mentioned, there is this outright, it really is a war on science. What I am seeing from scientists is this devastation shock that, from scientists in the US when I talk mm -hmm. to them. They just like cannot believe what has happened. And so just to put some context on this gain yeah. of function mutation, um, uh, restrictions that we're seeing, this is really coming off the back of the fact that Trump believes that the COVID-19 pandemic happened because of a lab leak through these gain of function um, uh, sort of research projects. And what you see here, mm. this, is un this is unbelievable, but if you go to covid.gov, which used to be a website that was giving information about COVID, basic information, it's a virus, this is how you catch it, this is how you do not catch it. Now you will be sent to this website that is called the Lab Leak. If you scroll up the top, you can see Trump walking like he's in a Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. film. <laughs> It's, it's, and it's filled, filled with misinformation, sometimes outright disinformation. I really want the audience to know that any scientists who really study COVID and study the virus, 
believe that the way that it came out into the human population is the same way that so many other viruses have infected humans. Mm -hmm. Ebola, SARS, MERS, West Nile virus, H5N1. And the way that happened was because it was in the animal population. Uh -huh. in, when it comes to COVID-19, we think it was in the bat population. Then it spread to another animal, possibly this very cute animal called a raccoon Actually, dog. We have we have a picture of a raccoon dog. There that's... it is, gorgeous. That's that's the suspect right now for the intermediary mm -hmm. creature, and then it came into to humans. So no need for any gain of function research to yeah. explain what's going it on is, here. It's just incredible what is <laughs> the, literally the war on science that he's waging, uh, Wendy. I'm going to have to have you back, I think. I think we're going to have to do a part three, I'm afraid. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the end. Exactly. There's so much going on. The funding cuts. Yeah. The, um, yes, exactly. The international consequences. Um, just to put a, a real quick... Um, for what we'll talk about in part three is mm. researchers have now, um, they've now calculated, they think that the cut to international funding that's happened through the Trump government may affect um, 25 million people that they may die in the next 15 years as a result of these cuts. So, Wendy, thank you. Thank I'm, so, you. I'm sorry, but thank you <laughs> for coming in, taking us through all of that. It is, it's such an incredible time right now. I know you'll be doing an episode, I assume, on this latest round. Yes, yes, that's right. Mm. All right, so make sure you're listening to Science Versus as Wendy keeps us across this war on science, team.